Going halfway on something does not give you half results. It gives you zero results. And so if you want to make anything happen, you have to commit. Commit to making it happen or sit on the sidelines. But don't trick yourself by doing half measures into thinking that you're actually taking action because you're not. So I've been running my company for almost over 13 years now. And in that time, I have had thousands of conversations with people who want to sit down and talk about a potential project. And whenever you're working with people and trying to help them figure out what it is that they need, what do they have to spend, what is the time, like eventually as you work through the entire process, you're always going to arrive at budget, right? Like you're going to figure out what the budget is. And so when people come to us, I kind of have a range of budgets that we typically work within. Let's say that we're doing a website project for them and it's an e-commerce shop. And to make this e-commerce shop work, we need a certain number of pages. We need a certain number of landing pages to support their campaigns and photography and checkout and email and all this stuff, right? Like the minimum viable product. Let's say that it's $30,000 to make this thing work and they only have $20,000. Then if they do anything for $20,000, they will waste $20,000. Like we have worked through the entire process. We know everything that is that they need. And so trying to deliver a $30,000 project for 20,000 means that either you're cutting a lot of corners, you're pulling out stuff that's core, so it'll never sell, it'll never work, and you'll deliver zero results, or you're going with just a much cheaper vendor. Right? If you have a $30,000 project and you're only going to spend $20,000 on it, it does not give you 60% of the results. It won't work. So you've taken twenty grand and you've completely wasted it. You're better off not doing anything. Like you're better off taking that twenty grand and going to a conference or setting up a table or maybe hiring a salesperson for six months. You're better off doing something else. But if you determine that you have to invest a certain number of dollars to make something work, going halfway will not help you. Do you know how many people reach out to me and say, we're doing social media and I ask why and they don't know? They don't know why they're doing it? People who do blogs, they do blogging and email marketing tied together and I say, why are we doing it? And they don't know. Who are we doing this for? And they don't know. But somewhere along the way, they were convinced themselves that these are activities and these are tactics that they have to do. That's halfway. Like, like that's a halfway mark. And so if you just break it down, cold math, you can spend 100% of the money to get 100% of the results, or you can spend 50% of the money to maybe get 10 or 20% of the results. It just, it just doesn't make sense. You're putting all that time and those dollars at risk. And of course, yeah, I mean, the 30 grand is more than the 20 grand. Of course it is. In many situations, we, we can literally determine what will work and what will not work. And so if you're not willing to invest the time or the money into what you need to do to make it work, then don't do it. It's okay, there's other things you can do. You wanna hire that salesperson, but you don't wanna spend the time training them or setting up systems or setting up processes or helping them in the field or helping them figure their stuff out. If you don't want to do that, that's okay. But then like, let's be honest, don't hire the salesperson, but you're not going to do that. You're going to hire the salesperson because it makes you feel like you're doing something. You feel like you're investing dollars and you're going to do it and then they're going to fail and then you're going to blame them. It's your fault. You didn't invest what you need to invest to make them succeed. They're going halfway. We have people who come to us and say, I want to do this advertising campaign. But then when we talk about monthly reporting, analytics, insight, and strategy, so month by month by month, the campaign can continue to optimize, continue to get better. We can continue to have an ongoing relationship so that way we can tweak things and change things based off of where they are in their business. They go, I don't really want to invest the money into that. Can't you just run the campaign? We could, but literally we're running it blind. We're not making it any better and we could potentially be wasting all of your dollars. So why wouldn't you spend a little bit of money to protect this whole thing? It's silly. It's silly. People want to do just enough that they feel like they're going to be doing something, but they don't take the time to figure out what the minimum activities, the minimum investment, the minimum viable product is to actually make it work. Now, of course, you can go too far on the other end. You can overspend in marketing. You can overspend in an activity to the point where you're actually seeing a diminishing return. We can determine that. So we know the minimum, and of course, 
we know what the maximum is where we should be taking the dollars and working somewhere else. But think about every part of your product delivery, of your retail store, of your e-commerce, of your service-based business, and think about where you are skimping, where you're going halfway. You know, we see this with customer service too. People go like, oh, we, um, we follow our clients on Twitter and we leave cool comments. Awesome. Are you extending that customer service mindset to every single touch point of the entire organization? Or are you just doing a good job with new leads? You know, people are super nice to people they want to sell to, and then they become customers and they ignore them. Or they're customers and they're nice to them once or twice, but year two and three, it's less exciting and you ignore them, right? You're going halfway. You're going halfway on these things. So I don't need you to be perfectionist. I don't need you to overinvest. I need you to think about what it is that you have to be doing and doing it really well and committing to because the in-between, the gray area, the wishy-washy, the you not being super declarative with what it is that you're doing, those are the things that hurt you. And they hurt you because you're fooling yourself. You think you're doing what you need to do and you are just wasting your time and you're wasting your money and you might as well focus on the other things. There's so many things you can do. So stop tricking yourself and put the dollars, put the time to the things that will actually make a difference. So naturally you're gonna ask, how do I know what the right amount is? Like how, how do I know? I just don't know. First, if you don't have the experience to be able to determine what the right amount is, then you need to work with people or hire people or consult with people or you need to do the research to learn it. You need to be in a position where with all of your activities, you know what that right amount is. Second, you need to measure and watch and track everything. Now people get caught up with scientific tracking, you know, like is this data accurate? And is it, you don't have to think in terms of absolutes. You just have to have indicators or milestones or data that will show you if it's going the right direction positively or working against you negatively. But if you can't track it, then you have no way of knowing if the activity is working or not. You have no way of knowing if you're scaling something up and seeing diminishing returns. You have no way of knowing if you're underinvesting in something. And let's say you're underinvesting it, right? Oh, this isn't working. Am I underinvesting in it? Try doubling the activities for a week. And if it doesn't make a difference, then no, this just this thing doesn't work. It's not that you're underinvesting in it. Like you've taken it from 50% to 100% or from 50% to 200% or to 300%, you will have the ability to start off in a really great place. But again, if you're not measuring it, if you're not watching it, if you're not tracking it, if you're not putting it out in the open and making it transparent, you have no way of knowing what's working and what's not working. And then third, don't buy in to how awesome you are at things. Right? You know, it's, it's great to say like, oh, we're on social and we're crushing it. But you don't actually know if you're not doing any of those first two things. You don't actually know if it's working for you, if it's a good use of dollars or not. If you're sending out that blog post regularly, but you're not taking the time to actually looking at the open count and determine if those opens and those people coming in are new people or existing people, if it's actually driving the objective in your business. And finally, Remember that going halfway on something will not get you the results you're looking for. In your business, picking up the phone half the time does not make you great at customer service. Hiring someone who can only do half the skills that you need them to do is not a smart investment. Underspending on the way that your marketing looks and the way that your brand feels is not great. Anytime that you're splitting away from what you have to do to make it happen, you are setting yourself up to fail. Save yourself the time, save yourself the money, and focus on the things that you know you will crush, and it will take you so much further. And to do things right, they cost what they cost. And so I'm not asking you, and I'm not telling you, and no one's gonna come along and tell you to get ripped off, or to overinvest, or to spend way too much. All I'm saying is if you're not willing to do it, don't do it. If you have your house, your dream house, all planned out, and you've worked with the architect, and you figured it all out and you're like, oh, I cannot wait. I've been saving for 30 years to build my dream house. I've been working, I've been slaving. I finally made it, I'm building my dream house. But you only have money to build it 70% there. They'll still build the house for you, but they're gonna put in a, a worse kitchen and worse finishing and they won't put in the tile properly and you won't have the faucets that you like and you won't have the lights that you like or the, pin, or the, or the trim. They're just gonna pull back. And so you're gonna walk into your dream home having spent 60% of what you should have paid, and the structure will be there, the house will be there, the windows will be there, and yet you're gonna be completely disappointed with it because you didn't spend what you needed to spend to hit your objective. Your objective was your dream home. You close your eyes and you picture it a certain way, 
and you wanna live that life a certain way there and have certain moments. And instead what you walk into is an empty box. Now, if your goal is to build the empty box, knowing that in five or 10 years, you're gonna finish the finishings, then you're being realistic about it. You're being 100% realistic about it. But if your dream is to walk into your finished place, but you're only gonna spend 60 or 70% on it, you're better off just being honest with yourself. And that is the same thing in your business. Whether it's marketing, or sales, or culture, or staff, or systems, or technology, no matter what it is, you have to spend appropriately to get the results that you want. If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.